Hey everyone! Imagine having a custom floor plan and home assistant where you can easily control your entire home, see real-time updates on which lights are on or off, and control them with just a tap, along with other smart home features. In today's video, I'll show you how to set this up step by step. Let's dive in. So, you're looking to elevate your home assistant setup, right? Maybe you're tired of the standard, plain interface and want something more polished, personalized and visually appealing. One great way to achieve this is by creating a custom dashboard with a floor plan layout that mirrors your home. Imagine having a real-time interactive floor plan where you can control lights, security, temperature and more, all with a few taps or clicks. In this video, we'll guide you step by step on how to replace that standard, somewhat boring panel with a sleek modern dashboard that includes your home's floor plan. Let's get started and turn your setup into something truly remarkable. The first step in creating a custom floor plan for your home assistant dashboard is to actually design the floor plan image of your house. There are plenty of apps that let you do this, but for this tutorial, I'm using Sweet Home 3D. It's free, easy to use and I'll drop a link in the description below for you to check out. Once you've got the app open you can start by drawing your house's walls and creating individual rooms. After that you can add doors, windows, and if you'd like even furniture from the menu on the left. Now, I won't be creating the entire floor plan in this video, as it would make things a bit too long. But if you'd like a detailed tutorial on that, let me know in the comments, and I can make a separate video for it. Once your floor plan is complete, make sure the 3D view is positioned exactly how you want to export it. Then, right-click inside the 3D window and select the Create Photo option from the menu. A pop-up will appear where you can define the image settings. Set the resolution to 1920 by 1080 and the proportions to 16 by 9. Choose the default lens, and then click Create. The rendering process will begin and this can take a few minutes depending on your computer's performance. I'll speed this up. Once the render finishes, simply click Save. Give the image a name, and choose where you want to save it on your device. Next, we'll head over to Home Assistant to create a new view for our dashboard. Start by going to the Overview tab, then click the pencil icon in the top left corner to enter Edit Mode. Once you're in, click the plus button to add a new view. This will bring up a pop-up where we can configure everything. First, give your view a title, I'll name mine Floor Plan. Then pick an icon to represent it. I'll be using the Floor Plan icon. For the view type select panel to give it that full screen look, and once you've got everything set, hit save. And just like that, you've created your new view. Now it's time to upload the floor plan image we created in Sweet Home 3D to Home Assistant. To do this we'll need to create a folder where the image can be stored and viewed. First head over to the file editor tab, click on the folder icon and check if there's already a folder named www. If that folder exists you can skip this step. If not click the new folder icon and create a folder named www. Next we'll need to restart Home Assistant to make this folder accessible. Go to Settings click on System and then hit the power button in the top right corner. Choose Restart Home Assistant and Confirm. Keep in mind, the restart process can take a few minutes, so be patient while it loads up. Now, head back to the file editor. Click on the folder icon, navigate to the www folder we just created, and click on it. Then, hit the upload button and select the floor plan image from the folder where you saved it. The floor plan image will be inside the www folder as you can see here in the file editor. Next, 
go to the Overview tab and click the Add Card button in the bottom right corner. Scroll down through the list of cards until you find Picture Elements and select it. You'll notice a default state badge is added to the card, but we don't need that, so go ahead and delete it. Now, let's set up the floor plan image. Click on Card Options, then scroll down to the Image Path field. This is where we'll enter the location of the floor plan image. Since the image is located in the local folder we created, the www folder, you'll need to type slash local slash followed by the exact name of your image file, including its extension. Just a heads up, the file path is case sensitive. For example, if you type a capital W in wall but your file name is lowercase, it won't find the image. The best way to avoid this is to copy and paste the file name directly. Once you enter the correct path the image will appear in the top right. Click Save. The base image of your floor plan is now set up, ready for you to start adding your devices and controls. From here, you can begin transforming your dashboard into a fully interactive control hub for your home. Next, we're going to create individual images for each room to simulate the effect of lights being turned on, like you can see here. You can use various applications for this, such as Photoshop or GIMP, but if you'd prefer not to install any software, I'll show you how to use an online tool instead. The tool is called PhotoP, and it's a powerful, free web-based editor. I'll leave a link in the description for you to check it out. Alright, head over to www.photop.com. You'll notice the interface is very similar to Photoshop, but don't worry if you've never used Photoshop before, I'll guide you step by step, and it's easier than it looks. First, drag your floor plan image into the application. I'm going to start with the top left room. To begin, select the Rectangle Select tool from the toolbar on the left. Now, create a selection by clicking and holding the right mouse button, then dragging until you've covered the entire room. Once selected, copy and paste the room, and you'll notice that a new layer is created in the Layers tab on the right. This new layer contains only the room you selected. Now, click back on the background layer so you can repeat this process for the next room. I'll select the next room, copy and paste it, and you'll see another layer pop up. Repeat this for all the rooms, but let's go over a trick if your room isn't a perfect rectangle. For non-rectangular rooms, like this one, start by selecting one part of the room with the rectangle tool. Then, press and hold the shift key, and with your mouse, select the remaining part of the room to form the second rectangle. Once again, copy and paste, and a new layer will be created. Keep doing this for all your rooms. I'll skip the rest so we don't make this video too long. Next, select the topmost layer, and at the bottom of the Layers tab, click on the Adjustment Layer button, it's the circle that's half white, half gray. From the menu, select Levels. In the properties of the Adjustment Layer, you'll see three sliders below a graph. Adjust the brightness of the rooms by dragging the white slider to the left and the black one slightly to the right. You can also play around with the gray slider to fine-tune the brightness to your liking. After you've got the brightness just how you want it, click the eye icon next to each layer, leaving only the adjustment layer and one room visible. To export the image, go to the top left menu, click File, select Export As, and choose PNG. Rename the file to match the room you're exporting, then click Save. Now, deselect the room you just exported by clicking the eye icon again, and repeat the process for the next room, File, Export as PNG, Rename, and Save. Continue these steps until you've exported all your rooms. The files should now be saved in your Downloads folder, ready to use. Now, let's head back to Home Assistant. Click on File Editor from the menu, then click on the folder icon at the top. Scroll down and select the www folder. Next, click the Upload File icon and choose the image for the room you want to configure first. I'll go ahead and select this one. 
Once the file is uploaded, go back to the Overview tab and make sure you're in Edit Mode by clicking the pencil icon in the top left corner. Then, click Edit on your Floor Plan view. In the Card Configuration, click on the drop-down menu and select the Conditional Card Type. Add a title for the card. Now, under the Conditions section, select Entity State. Here, you'll choose the switch or light entity you want to control for this room. Once selected, set the condition to on next to state is equal to. After that, select the image element from the drop down menu. Then choose the option for local path or web URL. Insert the path to the image of the room with the light on that you just uploaded. Scroll down to the style box and add width 100% so the image fully covers the base floor plan. Now, if you scroll up, you should see your floor plan. Turn on the light you assigned to this room, and you'll see the room light up on the floor plan. Click Save, and now when you switch on the light from the floor plan view, the corresponding room will light up. It's really starting to look good. Now, we need a way to turn the light on and off directly from the floor plan. Go back into Edit Mode, and in the card configuration, add a new element, this time, a state icon element. Select the same entity you used in the previous step for controlling the light. Next, choose an icon that represents the light or switch, I'll go with the bulb icon. In the Tap Behavior drop-down, select Toggle, so each time you click on the icon, it will turn the light on or off. Now, we need to position this icon inside the room it controls. To do that, go to the style box and define the position in percentages from the left and top. In my case, I'll set it to 15% from the left and 15% from the top. You'll see the icon move to the spot you specified. Adjust it if necessary, but keep in mind the image in the configuration card is smaller than the one in the actual view, so the position might be slightly different. Now, when you click the icon, it will toggle the light on and off, and you'll see the room light up. Click Save, and let's test it in the main view. It's working. The light turns on and the room lights up perfectly. It's coming together nicely. Now, let me show you another way to control the light, this time, using an image instead of an icon. First, click on File Editor from the menu, then click the folder icon at the top. Scroll down and select the www folder. Now, upload the image of the next room you want to configure. I'll be working on the living room, so I'll upload that image. For this method, you'll also need two additional images, one showing the switch turned on and another showing it turned off. I'm using a sun off switch, but you can easily find similar images online. I'll go ahead and upload all the files now. Next, go back to the Overview tab, and we'll follow the same steps to show the living room lighting up on the floor plan. Click Edit on the view. Add another element to the card, this time a conditional element. Give it a title so you can easily identify it in the card later. Now, set up the condition by choosing the entity you want to assign to the living room. Once selected, set the condition to on under state is equal to. Next, enter the path for the image of the living room with the light on. As always, don't forget to set the width to 100% in the style box so it covers the base floor plan. 
Click Save. And now, when I turn on the living room light, the floor plan will show that the room is lit up. And there you go. The living room is now lighting up on the floor plan. Now, let's add a switch image to control the living room light. Start by clicking Edit again, and then add a new element in the card configuration. This time, choose the image element. Next, we'll set up the switch to display different images based on whether the light is on or off. First, insert the path to the image for when the switch is off. You'll notice the image appears over the floor plan and, whoa! It's huge, but don't worry, we'll fix that in just a moment. Now, go to the Entity drop-down menu and select the entity you want to control. I'll choose Living Room. For Tap Behavior, select Toggle, so you can turn the light on or off with a simple press. Next, in the State Image box, insert the State On and add the path to the On image of the switch. This step is crucial because it tells Home Assistant which image to display when the light is on. Insert On, followed by a colon, and then add the path to the image, just like I'm showing here. Now, let's position and resize the image so it fits perfectly. I'm setting the width to 2%, with the left position at 75% and the top position at 30%. As you can see, the switch is now the correct size and in the right spot. Of course, you can adjust the size to your preference. Once you're happy with the placement, click Save. Now, let's test it. When I click the switch, the room lights up, and the switch image updates to show that it's on. It looks great, and you get a clear visual of what's on and off in real time. Now that we've set everything up for the living room, you can easily repeat these steps for other rooms in your home. Just go through the same process, add the image elements, link them to the corresponding entities, and adjust the positioning and size as needed. It's a simple way to bring your entire home under control using your floor plan. Now, let me show you something else you can add to your floor plan. I'm going to upload an image of a person at the door and configure it to appear whenever someone is nearby. Let's get started. Click Edit, then add a new conditional element. For the title, I'll add someone at the door. Next, we'll set a condition based on the sensor you want to monitor by selecting the appropriate entity. In my case, I'll choose the entrance motion sensor, and I want the image to appear when the state is detected. Now, I'll add an image element and insert the path to the image I just uploaded. I'll set the width to 100% and hit save. Let's test it out. Right now, there's no one at the door, as you can see on the screen. But if someone approaches, boom. The image of a person at the door appears, as you can see. This is just a fraction of what you can do with a custom floor plan and home assistant. I'll be making more videos covering other exciting features and possibilities, so stay tuned. That's it for today's tutorial. Now you've seen how easy it is to create a dynamic floor plan and home assistant with real-time controls and notifications. I hope this guide helped you take your smart home setup to the next level. If you found this video useful, make sure to give it a thumbs up, and don't forget to subscribe for more tips and tricks on smart home automation. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.